Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bonehead Podcast and welcome to Top 5 Friday. Every Friday we get together and have a look at the Top 5 something normally to do with Blood Bowl. So I spent the last year saying normally to do with Blood Bowl and today is the first time it is not a Blood Bowl centric Top 5. So I love Blood Bowl and I love gaming and Ben and I were doing the podcast, we were recording the podcast last night and we, we started talking about some of the other games that Games Workshop are producing that actually we really enjoy. So I thought I'd shake things up a little bit this Friday, have a little bit of fun and talk through my top five Games Workshop games that are currently in uh, in rotation so that you can actually go and buy right now. So spoiler alert, there will be no Epic there will be no Battlefield Gothic and no Man of War on this list. This is just stuff that is still live now that you can go and get from your friendly local gaming store. Anyway, on to my top five. Number five for me is Aeronautica Imperialis. So Games Workshop's history and the lore is just phenomenal. I'm not entirely sure if there is another IP that is, is saturated and developed as the Games Workshop universe. And in 40k, I think that I think it's just incredible. Now, Aeronautica Imperialis is, for all intents and purposes, kind of a mini game when it comes to playing miniature games. And when I say a mini game, I don't mean it's got miniatures, I mean it's just it's quite small scope. This game is all about fighters, jet fighters in the 40k universe and some of them therefore are not jet fighters in fact most of them probably aren't but they look like they are anyway this is about air to air combat in the world of warhammer 40,000 so in this picture here we've got space elves flying around shooting at space uh, stormcast i don't know space marines it's a really cool game now it's based on a hex map and you've got i don't know maybe five planes aside five to six planes aside depending on which race you're using and you've kind of got a hidden movement system where you decide what your plane is going to do um what kind of uh, maneuver it's going to do so every turn is a game of double thinking your opponent and trying to line up your planes behind theirs as if it was a world war ii dogfight or in fact a star wars dogfight and i i love it it is brilliant now one of the things i really enjoy about it is that a lot of the a lot of the combat a lot of everything that's going on is on the board and i love that about blood bowl you can look at a blood bowl pitch and if you know what the units do you know what the players do and in this if you know what the units do you can read the situation okay there's no massive gotchas there's some special rules and there's some cool flavorful things but when it comes to ai you build your roster you take a few extras absolutely but Every turn is a combat of your mind versus your opponent to try and get behind them and dogfight them. There's a ton of different units in there now. There's a ton of cool units. You've got bombers. You've got fighters. There's some VTOL stuff. There's troop landers. Uh, we're just seeing the Necrons land. Um, I think there's two coming out this week, last week. I don't know. You've got Eldar, Space Marines, uh, Imperial, Navy and Orcs at least. I'm probably missing something out. But there's a, there's a cool bunch of factions. I love the older planes. I got this box set for Christmas. I've got this one in the shed. Um, and I've only played it a couple of times. It's a really cool game. It is quite light. You can get a game done merrily in an hour, like tops. It's the same kind of length of gameplay as Blood Bowl 7s. And for a casual game, I think it's absolutely brilliant. And it's a really cool excuse to buy into something, to paint something a lot different. Uh, to get into this game, you'll need probably about... 50 60 pounds you need two boxes of planes and the rule stuff um, if you pick up by starter set you probably just need to pick up one extra box of planes so you're looking at about 60 quid from entoyment or something like that i love it it's really cool it's something different it plays really well and i was really impressed Number four for me is Necromunda. Now, I mean, this is also set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, and that's kind of what I mean about the, the theme and the IP and the setting being so incredibly deep. Necromunda is a game of gang warfare in a hive city, and a hive city is the same kind of thing as a mega block in, in, in Judge Dredd. It is essentially one massive city in one enclosed building. Technically, I think it's a series of buildings. Anyway, the whole point here is that it is an almost underground combat game where you are playing 
a gang of dudes or some space police and there's some really cool like factions in there as well but the thing for me i mean the mechanics are really good they've taken the 1995 game which i also blooming loved had a great rat skin warband and um the gang and they've updated the rules and the changes that they made to hive war were actually really good and the output of this game is a brilliant skirmish game um they've tried to do skirmish games repeatedly but necromunda they they got it right in the first go they plopped it out this new edition it plays really well and it's it's quite a tight game i guess i'd say is that that, that you have advantages your opponent has advantages but they're they're close so if you think about blood bowl you play humans versus orcs one team's got some advantages the other team's got some advantages but generally speaking the dudes are the same like the way they play is the same like the core values of everything is the same and this is the same with necromunda so it is kind of like the base is close together and everything you add is seasoning and spice and it's so incredible the theme here is just beyond anything and it is entirely um, uh, a league-based game. Okay, you've got your gang. You play missions to get more money. You get more money. You hire more dudes. Your dudes level up. This is the closest thing to Blood Bowl out there when it comes to having an experience system. In fact, I think the first edition of Necromunda basically had the same leveling up rules as Blood Bowl. They just had more skills in, in different charts. It's really, really, really cool. Now, it plays as quite a tight game as well. So there's two modes to play Necromunda. There's one which is pictured here in the, in the starter set, which is essentially flat. You're playing in tunnels. Um, and this is why Necromunda is, is, is a little bit lower down on the list than I feel like I'd want to put it because I love the game. But it is not easy or cheap to buy into because when it comes to Necromunda, you need a ton of terrain. You need a ton of terrain to make this game work. If you just play an open pitch, it's going to be just brutal. But what is so great about Necromunda is that it is all about climbing up stuff. It's all about using terrain to your advantage. This is like the shootout at the end of every action film. This is what happens. You can be the space police. They've got cool vehicles. They've got like the uh, the um oh what is it the ambot which is this kind of like robot thing it's just they've got some cool units they've got you even got little flying dudes now which is just amazing i am out of touch of necromunda but that is because they keep adding stuff and they just keep developing it more and more and more this is potentially a great mono game so if you want to live a game system you can get inside necromunda buy some stuff and you will never run out of things to buy things to add and different ways to explore the game and that's if games workshop basically stopped supporting it right now but they're not you've got all the different house gangs you've got different stuff you can add you've got different dramatis personae so like special characters star players basically the game's brilliant it's such good fun the models are amazing a gang is like 25 pounds um and that is the dangerous thing you can pick up a gang, you can paint it, and it can be awesome. And then you can think about the terrain, and then you start making terrain, and then you need another gang, and then you just add... It's, it's a very dangerous game to get into. But, dude, the, the background, the gameplay, it all genuinely leaves you feeling up against it in a gang war. Absolutely phenomenal game. Number three for me is Warcry. So if you listen to our podcast, you'll hear that every now and again I do talk about Warcry. And it is a brilliant little fantasy skirmish game. Um, now, Games Workshop dropped this and we were expecting it to be uh, the kill team in, but in fantasy land. It wasn't. Very different rule set. In fact, the Warcry rule set is in danger of being just too simple. But it is a. that's also the charm of it. And it's a really interesting and fun game to play we've played a bunch of these games down at club you activate your guys in sequence you alternate activation and then you take two actions with them you can attack move there's a couple of other things you can do but basically most of the time you're either going to be attack attack or move attack or attack move and that's it and when you attack you roll the amount of dice that's on your card and if you compare a stat to your opponent and if you roll well you cause damage if you roll really well you cause more damage if you don't roll well at all nothing happens it's a really simple mechanic if you're shooting dudes it's the same thing you just have a ranged combat skill and it 
flows brilliantly and they've got a really cool command system where at the beginning of uh, a round the beginning of a turn you will roll a pool of dice and if you roll a yahtzee you can kind of use it you have a menu each team each warband has its own menu of special powers it would be like in blood bowl starting off every drive by rolling three block dice and going hmm i've got three skulls that means for orcs i can use three skulls and get an extra blitz this turn or blitz twice with a dude and that's basically how this game plays out a game gets done in 30 minutes maybe 40 you've got three rounds it's objective based gameplay if you wanted to play this game at a club night you could binge three games without even worrying about it again this is the kind of blood bowl sevens length gameplay now the thing I love about this is you can swap your bands over really easily. So you can play a game and you can go, okay, cool. You know, what? I think I'll try the snake team. I think I'll try these cool dark elf guys in the next one, which is dangerous because it means you can spend 25, 30 pounds and pick up a war band and then you can pick up another war band and then you can pick up another war band. Um, and then there's also like these big monsters you can add. There's some little monsters you can add. There's no special characters yet. But I'm sure that star players for Warcry are just coming. They've got some cool expansion books. There is a, a asynchronous league play as well for your warband. Now, we've not really bothered playing with that um, because it's actually a really tight little matched play game. I've been really impressed with it. Now, the danger is that you can have multiple warbands and that is absolutely a danger but we're a blood bowl podcast where that exactly happens and not only do you have one warband for blood bowl you don't have to just have one dwarf team you end up with like six different dwarf teams because that's what we do and the other thing here that warcry adds is you need some terrain but unlike necromunda where you really need quite a lot of terrain and it's not cheap terrain either warcry realistically the boxes come with enough terrain for the game because it's played on a smaller pitch it's played on a pretty small board actually it's almost not much bigger than the blood bowl pitch i think you don't need a huge amount of terrain but if you are a war gamer getting some trees getting some stuff like that getting some hills is is quite easy to do and you can easily kind of proxy those if you don't have them when it comes to necromunda you want your terrain to look good because it kind of has a bit more functionality to it like you can get a hill for warcry and you're like cool i can use that for epic and for age of sigmar and for 40k if you get a specific bit of ruins and buildings for necromunda you can kind of use it for 40k sometimes so it's it's a bit more restrictive that's the beautiful thing about necromunda is that level of detail and like i said mono gaming like i now am a necromunda player for life warcry you can pick up your dudes and you can play on basically any service any service any coffee table and if you've got some gaming material around you're good to go the command system is brilliant the actual interaction between models is really simple it's really elegant this is almost a great gateway game for people playing miniatures game the downside is that what you've got on the pitch is a little bit complicated sometimes. Pitch, I am such a Blood Bowl player. When, what you've got on the table, like if you look at this Dark Elf team, man, Dark Elf team, if you look at this Dark Elf warband, you'll see that we've got one hero unit, we've got this other guy who may be a hero, you've got some crossbow dudes it's not easy to tell what is what sometimes and it, if you want to be like oh, i'll play this warband you can be like right that's the guy with the snake in his left hand facing the moon so he has one extra armor it, it can be a little bit of a barrier um if warcry was with some more um standard units as starter sets could be amazing but the great thing about warcry and this is why it's so high on my list you can just go and get some standard units. You can pick up the Conquest magazine or the Mortal Realms magazine. You can pick up some Robo Men from AOS and the new goblins that have come out in their starter set. And you can use those in Warcry. And that means that it's a it's a really cool way to get some simple fantasy game on the go. Now it can be Matrix gamed a bit, and hey, we're gamers, so we like to game the system. So technically, I believe the best walk band is uh, one made entirely of these crossbow guys. But that would cost £300, so it's probably not going to happen too much because they're specialist units. The cool thing is you can pick up some AOS, you've probably got enough 
if you're an AOS player, if you've got some AOS friends, if you've got £25 you want to do some stuff, you can get into Warcry and you are going to have a bunch of really good games. If you look at the AOS skirmish, fantasy skirmish set in the, the Age of Sigmar land, Warcry does an insanely good job of it. Number two for me is Adeptus Titanicus. Now, I will first up say that this is probably the most expensive game on this list. I'm not sure that it is as expensive as something like Warhammer 40,000 or Age of Sigmar, but it is not cheap, even a little bit. None of it is cheap. This is a big investment to get into. So if you are trying to get into Adeptus Titanicus, finding a friend to play with is the only kind of way you can do it. You can pick up a starter set if you can find one, and it was pretty good value. The starter sets now vary. For example, this one dude, one unit, is £95. So this is a collector's game. But do not let that put you off from the fact that the bare bones of this game are wonderful. This game is a game of battleships with legs. You've got big, stompy robots. These are not um, Power Rangers Zords. They're not Transformers. None of these guys roll around and fight things. These dudes walk slowly. And they've got big force shields and massive guns. And you will be lobbing energy and missiles and stuff across the table from each other. And you'll be running around little smaller dudes. So like the um, the knights, I love the little knight guys. Or the warhound titans. And you'll be working with them. And the game develops from a very simple basis. Where actually you can have a great fun time playing for two and a half hours. Trying to blow up each other's titans with maybe a mission in there to a really clever constructed combination of units where right i've built my force so that these dudes go up here they spam the shields the shields go down they can't do anything i bring my big dude up now the shields are down i just absolutely ruffle stomp them with this big smash it's a really cool it's a really cool combination the models are unnecessarily lovely they're not that hard to build. This game is an advanced miniatures game. The models are complicated. They are not... Oh, man. They are not their MI Heinz from uh, from Team Yankee. But they're close, okay? You need to build them carefully. You probably want to build them in sub-assemblies. It is advanced. The modeling is advanced. The gameplay is advanced. Kind of like the core gameplay is not advanced. It's brilliant. The, the thing with Adeptus Titanicus that is both a strength and a weakness is that it has developed a lot of stuff that is the game outside of the game. Blood Bowl on the table, right? So you can see what's going on. Adeptus Titanicus, it's got the stratagems and the secret tactics kind of stuff that fits off the field, but it is probably only about 10 to 15% of the game. A lot of this is about brewing up your roster, your team, your army to work in concert together. But the actual sitting down and playing a game, it, it takes 20 minutes to get into it so that you understand it for that first time. And I think what speaks to me so loudly about this is that when you play your second game, you will know all of the stuff you did wrong in the first game. And the mechanics allow you to do that. Okay, I loved this game because whenever I played it with like Rick, I would uh, absolutely redline my reactors. You've got your reactors, you can push your you can push your engines, you can just like overheat. And I was always on constant verge of exploding from being overheated, and it really upset him. He was like, "I need you need to cool your reactors, Ben." I'm like, "No, no, 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 let's go." And the game allows you to destroy yourself. It allows you to redline your units with NOS and just absolutely go for it. I love this game. This game is awesome. The models are amazing. The theme is amazing. The potential is amazing. It needs tanks. It needs tanks. When this game has things like Shadow Swords and Bane Blades, I will cry with joy. But for now, I'm absolutely okay with big stompy robots.
Number one, and this ought to surprise absolutely none of you at all, this is a Blood Bowl channel because Blood Bowl is invariably the best Games Workshop game out there. The rules are the best. They still suffer from being 97% perfect, which means that that 3% is glaringly obvious and it takes them six months to get an FAQ. The Sevens pitch is here to remind us all that when Sevens landed, the rules were just completely incomplete because you're like, can I kick it there? Can I not kick it there? So we spent six months not playing sevens because we didn't know how. However, that is now fixed. This game has got 20-something teams. There's 28 teams out there that are available. There are third-party teams that you can chuck in, that you can work on. The game has various different modes. You've got sevens, which is just light gameplay. There's a league system for sevens, which is cool, but actually sevens is... Probably best just played for a three games in a night with some skills to add a little bit of spice to get a flavour of a team. You've got full on league where your story develops. Your dudes, they grow and they go, okay? They thrive and they die. And it is just, I mean, it's a great way to teach people about loss. Like, oh, nice, sweet gutter runner you've been working on for five months. LOL, he's dead now. It's a genuine experience. And then you've got competitive, constructed Blood Bowl, tournament Blood Bowl, where you're like, right... Let's brew up 1,200 TV, 1 1.2 million, six skills each. Let's go. Let's see what we can build up. You can take some star players. This team, this game has got teams galore. It's got those star players, which in second edition have become, I think, a boon to the game. Some of them, not so much. Like some of them have become essentially meta breaking, but actually Games Workshop has tweaked them a little bit. So Hackflem is less overpowered now. What it does do is it takes those 28 teams and allows you to build not just a dark elf team but you can do a dark elf team with a tiny angry squirrel from uh, of death you you take that 20 something teams and with all the different builds you take it up to like a hundred so you've got hundreds of different games you can play with this game and it is just phenomenal i haven't even mentioned dungeon bowl which is a brilliant new way to play blood bowl that harkens back from a game that was out before i was born and it's just everything the rules are fantastic. The theme is brilliant and funny and light. You can pick up this game and play it, whether you've played Blood Bowl in two years or two minutes, and the game will speak to you. What is happening in that game is happening on the pitch. There is very little in the way of hidden information. Once you teach someone the mechanics and you kind of explain what the players are, everybody can figure out the situation and make well-informed decisions the reason i love blah blah i think more than anything in the world is because once you start going you know there's a ton to learn but you know what's going to happen you know how to do things really quickly and that's why sevens is just phenomenal for getting people into this because 10 minutes into a sevens game they know how to play sevens they can play blood bowl and then it is 10 years of learning tactics and teams and that is playing with the core rules then there's the expanded rules and the community rules and the mixed teams rules blood bowl is hands down the best games workshop game that is currently available and uh, spoiler alert for all these top buys blood bowl best game ever made all right i'm a huge spaceship fan i love battlefleet gothic Warmaster is just gorgeous but it is not blood bowl it is not the game of blood bowl that is out on multiple devices maybe next year and this year and next year and the year after blood bowl best game out there that will surprise none of you but it had to be said now, when it comes to Games Workshop, they've got a ton of great games out there as well. Underworlds would have made this list, but it can be overly competitive and therefore a little bit complex to get into. Age of Sigmar and Warhammer 40,000 are incredibly lovely models, and the worlds are phenomenal. But I'm not convinced that the game is that great. But the worlds are great. Kill Team, ah, used to be awesome. Now the new edition, it just seems to be a game of... Can I get more tokens on the battlefield than you? Great thing about Blood Bowl, there's like four tokens. I actually want more tokens in Blood Bowl. I want Noblar Trappers who come on and put little traps down, okay? That's the next thing we need for Blood Bowl is actual tokens on the pitch. That's cool. We've not explored that yet. And, but I think they ran out of cardboard because of Kill Team, which just means that you spend less time playing the game and more time playing what you wish was a game of, like a euro game or something it's a very confusing one games workshop make incredible models they make incredibly expensive models but what they do is amazing 
The reason Blood Bowl is so good is because the game outlives and outsurvives and out outgrows every part of it. This game is bigger than Games Workshop. This game is bigger than the community. It's bigger than us here. It's bigger than you there. This game is ever living and it's awesome. So if you're watching this channel, I'm assuming you've played Blood Bowl. But if you want to play more Games Workshop games, I recommend the other four. You can go and buy them. Some of them are expensive. Some of them aren't. All of them are fun. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Let me know what your favourite Games Workshop games are out there. And I know it's not entirely Blood Bowl, this list. But every now and again, I just have to vent my love for miniature wargaming. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl, Asterix and other stuff content. Happy gaming! Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to help support the channel even further, please like and subscribe or come join us on our Patreon. We have early access to content. We get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can. Or you can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.